All right, the supply chain crisis on full display in grocery stores now as shelves remain empty due to food-related shortages. Restaurants are also feeling the impact, many being forced to increase prices during an already high period of inflation. Prices for food away from home up nearly 5 percent, as you can see that. That was last month compared to a year ago. Fat Brands owns more than a dozen franchises worldwide. And joining me right now is the chairman uh, of Fat Brands International. He is the former CEO of McDonald's U.S. And Dave's Barbecue CEO, Ed Renzi. Ed, great to see you. Thanks very much for being here this morning. Look, you've been around the block in terms of seeing these cycles back and forth. How does this supply chain crisis uh, relate to what you've seen in the past? And, and, and talk to us about the inflation story, how you assess these issues. Well, I first experienced this uh, back during the uh, 70s up into the 80s when we had stagflation where prices of fuel was going up like crazy, transportation was limited, distribution was limited. Uh, we had to raise prices. We had to address a, our opening and closing schedules in restaurants, modified to menus. And we're going through it again. And it's been exacerbated clearly by COVID. But it's also been impacted dramatically by the policy policy changes that President Biden made uh, even before he was inaugurated when he said he's going to shut down oil, shut down the pipelines, move away from fossil fuel. And today, uh, uh, over the road truck driver who has about 300 gallon capacity on their truck, when they fill up today, it's almost $600 more to fill the truck up. That means it's going to show up in the price of goods shipped, which includes food, because a lot of our food is produced in areas where the restaurants aren't, like uh, lettuce and stuff in California and, and produce being shipped to the East Coast. Uh, some product, I'm, I'm doing uh, some management support work with a hydroponic grower, uh, Green Life, here in Florida. And we're talking about buying our own trucks so we can move the product closer to the end user. Uh, we can't afford the transportation yeah. costs we have now. Additionally, we've got a huge shortage of drivers. Young people don't like the lifestyle. These guys are on the road 4,000 miles a week. They don't yeah. go home. We need to yeah. change that whole infrastructure, the school system. We ought to be putting as much money into truck driving school as we do into college loans. We'd be a lot better off long term. Yeah. I think you make a great point. Uh, this is actually a dangerous job. These guys and gals are driving all night. And uh, it, it, I, I remember talking about this issue when I was doing my artificial intelligence special because they were trying to insert AI in, in a lot of these trucks. But, but, Ed, I mean, look, right now you've got the president and the Democrats negotiating uh, potentially $4 trillion. I don't know if it's $2 trillion, $4 trillion, $5 trillion. They've got all these gimmicks in there. It's hard to really know how much it is. But, I mean, they're, they're negotiating. Negotiating more spending, which may very well stoke more inflation. The president last night says he doesn't have a plan uh, about reining in the price of gas. I mean, do they just are, are are they inept in terms of understanding economic issues? What what's the story? Well, well, there's a big difference between leadership and management, and we're being managed right now. The mm. pandemic is a classic example of that, how we're being managed and not led. There's a solution to all these problems. Ford Motor Company is building a huge facility, Texas, Kentucky, primarily because they can get electricity from the T Tennessee Valley Authority, and they can't get it in Michigan. They, they are moving out of their home because of that. Uh, you look across mm. the United States, we're modifying menus in restaurants uh, because we we don't have enough staff to manage these restaurants. We don't have enough staff to yeah. operate the restaurants. We're changing portion sizes because chicken's gone from $40 a case to $170 a case because we can't get chicken to market because the trucks aren't moving. Uh, I tell you that our president right. and his party are tone deaf to what the real issues are down on Main Street. They just don't understand it or yeah. they don't care. I don't know which, but it's no, got to change or we're going to have major problems. Yeah. Well, I mean, the other day, they said it was a high-class problem. How is a double-digit increase in chicken and eggs a high-class problem? I, I, you know, but look, and I got to switch gears and ask you one thing about, yeah, go ahead. I was going to say, fortunately, at Fat Brands, we've got a very intelligent, adept management team that are working with franchisees yeah. to cover up supply issues, yeah. modifying our menus, and we haven't had much of an impact. Okay. In fact, our sales are up, and it's all good. 
fantastic. Congratulations for that. Ed, real quick on China. You say a senior party chairman in China, a senior person in the uh, Communist Party, told you 11 years ago that the CCP does not need to bomb the United States, that there's no need for soldiers, that the, that the CCP believes they'll defeat the United States with technology and economics. This is a point that I've made on this program a number of times, and I want to get your take. W what are you suggesting in terms of the CCP? Well, it's, it's very clear that our policies in the United States are giving world dominance to China because of economics. Uh, right now, their manufacturing is growing so much that they're building a new cold fire electric plant monthly and opening them up because they don't have enough electricity to support their infrastructure. We're chasing through our tax policies and our regulations manufacturing out of the United States. And it's all going to China. We can't sustain yeah. this democracy of ours without jobs. And he was very clear. He says, you Americans, the president, and I'm not going to get into who it was at the time, the president confuses fair with good business judgment. We don't need to nuke the United States to dominate you. We'll let you decay from inside, and we'll win economically. Just think about this for wow. a minute. We well, uh, surrendered, gave back. Yeah. We gave the Panama Canal back to, to Panama, which we should have done. But we should have gone in there and spent money on infrastructure. China came in there and widened the canal so they can bring their biggest ships, biggest cargo ships, through the Panama Canal to the east coast of the United yeah. States. But we don't have deep sea ports to handle them. Come to Come to yep. Tampa. It costs three hundred to five hundred thousand dollars for a ship to go through the Panama Canal, and shipping the empties mm -hmm. back are almost equally that much. It's crazy what's yeah. going on. Well, and we're just is, surrendering. Look, this is a national. This is a national security issue, Ed. We just gave up the Bagram Air Base. Okay, and that's a whole nother issue. We're going to talk about that with my next guest, but we so appreciate you joining me this morning, Ed. Thank you. Ed Renzi from Fat Brands International. Coming